Attention all history buffs. If you're looking for something to add to your list of historical facts, we actually have something right in the heart of Lewis to keep you right on track. So David, tell me a little bit about how this red caboose began. It's like right in the middle of the library. Like, how did it get here? It didn't always start here, correct? <laughs> no, no, it didn't. The, um, the Lewis Junction Railroad and Bridge Association was formed um, to, to interpret the railroad history and preserve some of the railroad history right here in Lewis. Mm -hmm. The first thing that we did was actually save the, uh, the historic swing bridge, which went across the canal. A lot of, a lot of your uh, people have seen that, I'm sure, where they lifted the bridge up and put it at right. the, alongside the bike trail. Well, we were the ones that got that going. It's also part of our mission was also to preserve a piece of the railroad track that once ran through the town of Lewis. This track would have gone wow. all the way from Georgetown to Cape Henlopen State Park at Fort Miles. So when they were getting ready to decommission the rail line, we came forward and said, can we help save this? And that's how the track got here. As part of that mission, we, just, we, we purchased this caboose from the last operating rail line that was here. Okay. It's called the Delaware Coastline. We purchased the caboose and we decided that we were going to refurbish it and restore it cosmetically so that people could come and see what it looks like inside of Cocaboose. We started that project in Georgetown. Okay. And in December of last year, we picked the caboose up, brought it over here, set it back down on the tra tracks and finished our restoration. And today that's what you see right here. So how did you get it? You said it started in Georgetown. How did you get it all the way over here? I knew it took some manpower to get it here. That's crazy. Oh yeah. Okay, so the, the caboose weighs the caboose weighs 26 tons. My. You have to take it off of its wheels, which we did. The whole red box comes up, and the wheels stay. You then put the red box on a truck, and you drive it down Route 9. <laughs> the wheels go on a separate truck, and they come behind it. When we got over to here, there were cranes waiting for us. They lifted the black wheels off and set them down and then the cranes lifted off the red box part and set it down back on top of the wheels. All right, that sounds like it, it took some time. It took some time. So tell me why you wanted it to come here instead of staying at Georgetown. What was the big purpose of placing it right in the middle of the, right in front of the Lewis Library? Okay, so this, this is the center of our mission. This is called the junction. This is where the, the Breakwater Junction track would have gone off to Rehoboth. And this is the important rail line that brought the goods in or the goods back out off of the uh, Delaware Bay. And this was where, this is where the center of the activity was in Lewis. So to preserve for the city, um, the importance of the railroad, that's why we restored the track and its location here. And that's why we put the caboose on. We have plans now in the works to move a steam locomotive, which has already been donated to us. It's in Wilmington, waiting for us to raise the money to bring the steam locomotive and put it there as a, as a uh, complement to the uh, red caboose. So that's where we are currently, 1913 steam locomotive. So the whole purpose of this is you guys have some tours. Am I able to take a tour now? Sure, All we'd, right. be, we'd be more than happy to show you inside. All right, let's, let's go. go take a look. As you can see, the flag is already up, which means it's time to go look inside. All right, David, so you said you have a history of trains. What got you here? <laughs> um, I've worked uh, all my life, pretty much, in Wilmington, mm. for the Wilmington and Western Railroad, which is a tourist railroad, operates steam locomotives, vintage equipment. I'm very familiar with these kinds of cabooses and restorations that it takes to do that. So when I retired, I came down here and got interested in what they were doing to preserve this piece of track and the caboose. And that's how I got involved again. Now I'm in Lewis doing it. Nice, so would you say this is kind of like your passion? You're really passionate as you talk about it. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> I, think it's, I think it's pretty obvious. I, I, I really believe in this. This is a piece of history. Nice. What we're trying to do here is really give history a chance to uh, be preserved and let children, moms, dads, the community, visitors to come and see how important the railroad was and why it was even put here in the beginning. Right, and I see you have pictures all around the caboose. Can we start with like some historical facts or some historical pieces that are really important to this caboose? Um, sure we can. When, when the volunteers actually, again, the, the caboose was built in 1917, and when we started to come in here to do our restorations and, and cleanup work, 
we found that the old wood, which is what this is, is mm -hmm. still the original wood. And all we did was clean it very carefully and then repaint it rather than take everything out and make it look brand new. Right. So you said you restored the wood. Is there anything else that's really been restored or did you try to keep it as historical as possible? Um, it is it is as close to historically accurate as can be. Nice. Okay. This the uh, the bunks and the foot lockers are all original, and the the crew and and staff of the train would have slept on these. Oh my! And they would have also they would have cooked their meals on this heater combination stove, which is right here. This is oil uh, fired. There would have been a fire in here, and you could cook on this. As the train was traveling down the tracks, this is its only source of heat. Oh my so with goodness. two, maybe three people in this caboose in the dead of winter, it would have been very important to have this thing in perfect working order. It gets cold in here. As you can see, donated to us was an original Pennsylvania Railroad issued coffee cup. Wow. As was the lamp that you see on the wall, which is an original Pennsylvania Railroad caboose lantern. So I see there's like lights already in here. So these lights were not a part of its original design. They are not. Okay. <laughs> these lights that you see that look much more modern and the switches are an add-on or an aftermarket, we could say. Got it you. was put in here probably by the Conrail. So the Pennsylvania Railroad merges with the New York Central, which becomes Penn Central. Penn Central eventually goes out of business and that becomes Conrail. So this caboose started as red probably at one point was green for the Penn Central and then went to blue and now it's red again. So it all changes depending on who owns it at that time, all That's the colors. Correct. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Each one of the railroad lines would have had their specific colors so that they were they were distinguished between the other rail lines that they were operating with. All right, nice. And the whole purpose here is because you guys have something really cool happening this weekend. That's correct. We have, now that, now that the caboose is, is finished, and we've got um, a lot of the materials in, in place and we can, we can tell our story. We're gonna start opening the caboose to the public. This is the first time. Wow. This, this Sunday from 10 to two, we will have the, the, the flag flying and you can come in, bring your family and, and listen to why the caboose was important, ask some questions, learn a little bit of the history and where the rail lines ran here in Lewis and on to Rehoboth and why it was so important to Sussex County. All right, and will you be leading the tours? I probably will be. Unfortunately, I'm always <laughs> here. But no, I, I enjoy it, and I like to talk with people, and I, I'm going to be helping to train some of the new people that, were, that are going to be in here working so that they can get a little background on how it's done. All right, guys, so if you're interested in a nice little piece of history, David can walk you through this weekend. There's more Coast Life on the way.